Welcome to Water Level. The story of Lake Mead and Lake Powell today is told entirely through numbers, and those numbers paint a very sharp picture of where these reservoirs stand. At Lake Mead, the latest recorded elevation is 1,056.72 feet, taken on Thursday, September 25, 2025. This puts Mead nearly 163 feet below full pool, which is an elevation of 1,219.60 feet. In terms of storage, the reservoir is holding just 31.6% of its full capacity, which equals 25,087,000 acre-feet when completely full. That percentage translates to a lake that is significantly drawn down, carrying a volume that is less than one-third of what it was designed to hold. Compared to a year ago, Lake Mead is down by 6.97 feet, though it has managed to stay 2.65 feet above its lowest point for this water year. Inflows and outflows for Lake Mead provide further detail about how the system is operating. For water year 2025, total inflows reached 7,751,645 acre-feet. This number is just above 118% of the long-term September average, which would suggest a relatively strong inflow year on its own. However, the releases tell a different side of the story. Hoover Dam has released 7,817,523 acre-feet over the same period, and that figure is only 86.86% of the minimum required release of 9 million acre-feet. With releases exceeding inflows, Lake Mead's total storage has fallen by 536,010 acre-feet during this water year. The data also showed that inflows this year are only 95.15% of what they were in water year 2024, and the rivers feeding the reservoir are running at just 75.36% of their long-term average. In simple terms, Mead is receiving less water than it is sending downstream, and the result is a shrinking storage volume that remains well below healthy levels. Looking at the chart of Lake Mead over the past month, we can see short-term movements that reflect daily management. At the start of September, the lake was hovering around 1,055.5 feet, and over the following two weeks, it climbed steadily, peaking near 1,057 feet by mid-September. After September 15th, the level began a gradual slide, drifting downward before flattening out and holding close to 1,056.5 feet through the end of the month. This kind of short-term variation is typical and reflects the delicate balance between inflows, releases, and local use. What stands out, however, is that even with small gains during the month, the larger picture remains one of a reservoir that is far from its design capacity with limited ability to recover quickly. Turning to Lake Powell, the situation is even more stark. As of the same reading date, September 25, 2025, Powell sits at an elevation of 3,545.12 feet. That places it about 154.88 feet below full pool, which is 3,700 feet. By volume, Powell is currently at just 27.86% of its capacity, holding far less than one-third of its designed storage of 24,322,000 acre-feet. The raw volume translates to over 2.2 trillion gallons of water, yet in terms of the system's design, it is still deeply depleted. Compared to a year ago, Powell has lost 33 feet of elevation. It is currently sitting at its low point for this water year, and it is down by 32.89 feet from the year's high. Looking deeper into Powell's inflow and outflow balance, the challenges become clear. For water year 2025, total inflows totaled just 5,068,674 acre-feet. That figure is less than half of the long-term September average of 10,182,406 acre-feet, coming in at only 49.78%. Meanwhile, total releases from Glen Canyon Dam for the year reached 7,388,507 acre-feet, that's nearly 2.3 million acre-feet more released than received. As a result, Powell's total storage has dropped by more than 2.3 million acre-feet this year alone. 
The 34 reservoirs upstream of Powell are currently holding only 68.96% of capacity, and the rivers feeding Powell are running at about 70.81% of their average for late September. This mismatch between input and output is the central driver behind Powell's sharp decline. The water level chart for Lake Powell tells the same story in visual form. At the start of the 12-month period last fall, Powell's elevation was just below 3,580 feet. From that point forward, the trend was almost entirely downward. Through the winter months, levels slid gradually, and by spring the lake was already approaching 3,550 feet. A modest rise appeared in late June, pushing levels upward for a short period as runoff provided a brief surge of inflow. But by mid-July, that gain was erased, and the descent resumed. By September, Powell had dropped to just over 3,545 feet, marking the low for the water year. This chart highlights that even temporary improvements cannot outweigh the broader pattern of decline when releases continue to exceed inflows. When comparing the two reservoirs, one difference stands out. Mead has been able to hover and even gain slightly in short stretches, while Powell has shown a much steeper and more consistent decline. This is largely due to Powell's role as the upper reservoir in the system, feeding downstream obligations that include Lake Mead itself. The system is designed so that Powell must release water to meet downstream needs, and when inflows are insufficient, the burden falls directly on Powell's storage. Mead, while also dropping overall, has had inflows closer to average, which has allowed it to tread water more effectively, even though it remains in a critical state. Both reservoirs together illustrate the fine balance of the Colorado River system. In this water year, Mead lost just over half a million acre-feet, while Powell lost more than four times that amount. These losses come despite inflows that, at least at Mead, were above long-term averages. The reality is operational demands, legal requirements for releases, and upstream storage conditions ultimately shape how much water stays in these lakes. With Powell under 28% of capacity and Mead just over 31%, the combined storage picture is one of significant strain. As the current water year comes to a close, the numbers highlight reservoirs that are carrying less water than they were a year ago. Mead is down nearly 7 feet year over year, and Powell is down more than 33 feet. The downstream obligations and upstream shortages are squeezing both lakes, leaving them far below their full pool levels and reducing their flexibility to meet future needs. Watching the numbers change day by day offers a reminder that every inflow, every release, and every foot of elevation is part of a larger story of water management in the Colorado River Basin. As we close this update, the numbers from both Lake Mead and Lake Powell make it clear how much every shift in elevation matters. These reservoirs remain well below their design capacities, and each foot gained or lost tells the story of balance between inflows and outflows. We'll continue tracking these changes closely day by day because the levels at Mead and Powell are not just statistics, they are the lifeline of the Colorado River system. Thank you for following along, and stay tuned for the next update on where the water stands.